Well, um, welcome to the Send, and um, today I'm joined with um, Adrian, who's going to talk to us a little bit about um, biblical counseling. Um, so, if you if you like what you hear, please like and subscribe, and uh, check out our other videos as as well. Um, but but as a as an introduction, Adrian, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Just tell us a little bit about who you are and and how you came to Christ. That's a that's a question I always ask people, and sure. um, and what biblical counseling is and how you. Well, we'll get to that actually. Swap okay. swap that question. Um, how you got into biblical counseling? Um, but but yeah, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, well, um, it, it kind of wrapped all together. Um, my testimony. I, 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 you can hear from the accent, I grew up in the States, and uh, I, I didn't grow up in a Christian home, and I, I hated God, hated everything that had to do with church, Christianity. Um, then a friend of mine, uh, be, who could drink more than anybody I knew at the time, he, uh, he became a Christian, and I thought he was crazy, and I started arguing with him, and he brought me to church, and um, I didn't become a Christian right away, but I started going to church and I started talking to the pastor. And after a couple of years of, of watching, I only went to church because it was the, the only place where people were nice to me. It was the only place where I felt like I, I had adults that actually seemed to care. And even though I didn't believe in that Christian stuff, I was, I, I had, it was having fun. It was, it was in my late teens. And, um, I kept going back for that. And, uh, and then after, in time, um, arguing with the pastor, arguing with my friends, I eventually, you know, the Lord did work in my heart and uh, repented and, be, and had a really huge transformation. And this is my late teens. Um, and I went from just hating God, hating people, hating everything, just totally selfish, uh, selfish in my thinking, not really ever concerned about others. And all of a sudden, God just did a work in my heart and I... Um, I, I started really being concerned about church and about other people and just started loving um, the Bible. I had no idea. Oh man, I had, I, I was the, I was a kid who went to the youth group for the first time. And when they said, turn to John three sixteen, I turned to page 316. <laughs> you know, I had no clue. Um, and so anyways, the Lord just gave me this, this love for the word and I went to Bible college. And so I'm now, I'm, so that's how I became a Christian. Now I'm going to answer how I got into biblical counseling. I had this real passion, real zeal in my early Christian walk. And um, I, I, was, I became a youth pastor probably too early in my life. But I became a youth pastor, and uh, then I went to Bible college. And at the end of my Bible college, my undergraduate degree, um, I, went, I, just, I would really want to go to seminary, graduate school. And all my friends, ready? I had, they said, don't go to Bible college. Don't go to seminary, you know? We want you to become a psychologist. We want you to be focused. You have you have such a ministry with personal relationships, with like discipleship, one on ones, with my youth ministry, with you know the uni students I was working with. Um, that we think you know you you need to have that personal ministry um, working with people. So go be a psychologist. And I thought you know that's fair enough. But in my life, and this is before I even ever heard of biblical counseling. In my life all the major transformations that occurred because I was, I was dark. I came from a really dark place. All the major transformation that occurred to me came from learning and submitting to the word of God and working within the church. And I, I thought, you know what, when, you know, when my friend said, don't go to Bible college, go off to become a psychologist or whatever. I was like, you know what? I would, that might be something I do in the future, but right now, because I didn't grow up in the church, I didn't know the Bible as well as I, th I felt like I should. I really need to submit and, and go to a, a you know Bible college and really get you know solid there before I can start doing that personal ministry of the Word. Then when I went to that Bible college, they had this department called Biblical Counseling, where it was that intersection of theology and personal ministry, um, and working you know the ministry of the Word in a personal sense, not just the you know public sense preaching. And I just loved it. And I just got it. That's how I got into it. I just started doing that and uh, just excelling in, in that area. I was, um, I was a counselor before I was in, in ministry. Um, but I went to a, a secular university to learn counseling and worked in secular 
organizations. So can you explain a little bit about, I mean, we have an idea of, of what counseling is, you know, you sit on the, the couch and, and some guy tells you, talks to you about your relationships with your dad and whatever, but can you tell us what, what is the difference between uh, counseling like that and, and secular counseling, mm -hmm. professional counseling and biblical counseling? Yeah, no, that's, that's a really good question. I get asked that a lot. I think that the, the there, there's a couple, there's, there's several distinctions, but um, one of them um, is the, the reality is the fact that uh, is a source of truth that we rely on. So, you know, if I ask a hundred people what, you know, how, how we should live and how should we should think you're going to a hundred different answers. The difference with, I believe as Christian counselors that we have is we have one authority. We have God's word and one, one source of truth. And it's not up to, you know, I mean, it's, it's not up to my own, how I want to live it, how I want to live my life. It's it, the Lord has directed, you know, everything that deals with life and godliness, first Peter, everything that we have that we need that is concerned, that concerns life and godliness, how to live and how to be godly, how to deal with our own sin, our own struggles and the sin that's done to us, how we respond, all that's in the word. And so counseling, um, it, you know, counseling is just helping somebody and, and you, there are many skills and many different skill sets that you learn in that. But the, what makes biblical counseling different or biblical soul care, discipleship different is that our focus is on what, you know, I'm counseling you through what the, what the, the counselor in the sky wants you to know, wants you to be like. I have a perfect model of who you are to be that isn't reliant on the world, but is reliant on, on God, Jesus. And, and ultimately the, the real, the real, if you really want to boil it down to the one thing that's, that's different is it, it it's a gospel work. And the focus is the gospel and it's a supernatural work that happens as the word and the spirit work in the life of a believer. And just like all Christians, we just have this ministry of, of, you know, bringing people to the word and keeping them accountable to it and, and using all the counseling skill sets that we learn to help them. So I don't know, that, that, that's, that's basically what makes biblical counseling different from yeah. other forms of counseling. It's that reliance on the truth. That's, a, that's an interesting thing you just ended with and led to a question I was going to ask later, but I'll ask it now. Um, I guess, you know, even, even as a kid, I remember seeing a couple counselors when I was young and I can probably say that I have no idea what they said. I, uh, nothing that they said stuck in my head, but I can think of wise people around me who, who spoke into my life. Um, who, and I can remember what they said. They weren't professional counselors. And, and, and I've noticed kind of a trend within ministry, you know, the, the, the notion that, Oh, I've got somebody who needs to be, counseled i've got somebody who needs to know about jesus i'm going to go refer them to the pastor um or i'm going to refer them to a a christian counselor so so i guess my question is who who can be a biblical counselor and, and who is who is biblical counseling kind of um geared towards i think i think everyone who is in christ is a biblical counselor everyone who is um, who knows the truth and has been impacted by it and has modeling it is a counselor. Now, obviously there, there are some people who are, are there, there's, there, there's different, you know, skill sets and there's different levels. You know, not everybody's a pastor. Not everybody is an elder. Not everybody is equipped to lead or teach or counsel. Um, and I kind of see myself as, you know, I, and I'm, you know, so I, I, I just said, everyone's a counselor at the exact same time. I teach counseling courses. I'm, I'm a professional. I have a certifications, you know, I'm, I'm getting a PhD in counseling. So obviously there, there are levels of, of knowledge and wisdom and experience that make you, that equip you as an individual to be better at something than, you know, someone who just became a Christian or just started learning about a, a new skill. And so um, in, in the short answer is everyone is a counselor. Everyone has a, if you know, the gospel and you're able to tell somebody about the gospel about jesus you're a counselor um when you help your child and you're you're leading them you know 
gently and patiently in the ways of the Lord. Um, you're counseling them that you're a counselor. Now, in the church, it's the same thing. You're, if you're a friend, you're a mate, you're talking to, to somebody, you're, you're doing the same thing. Now, what's now, obviously, you know, the more equipped you are, the, the more experienced you are, the, the more under, the, you know, the better you will be at counseling. Um, uh, so I never want to pigeonhole someone saying, I mean, you know, the Apostle Paul didn't have a certificate that said he is a counselor. Um, I, I don't ever want to make it sound like you have to have this, this level. I, in fact, I personally don't even like using the word counseling because mm -hmm. there's so much baggage that yeah. comes along with that term. So I, I use, I, I talk about biblical soul care, talk mm -hmm. about discipleship, and, you know, just mates talking, just friends talking, just, just hanging out. Yeah. And that helps, that helps kind of alleviate that, that tension that occurs like, oh no, I can't do counseling. Mm -hmm. Well, you do it every day. When you yeah. ever talk to a friend and you're, you give them some advice or you listen to them and, and you encourage them, you're counseling. Yeah. And you receive counseling every day too. I mean, that's mm -hmm. one of the the worries that I, I hear people have is oh, I don't, I don't want to see a counselor because of the stigma attached to, to seeing a counselor. I'll go talk to a pastor or I'll go talk to a friend, but I don't want to go and, and see a, a counselor um, when they don't realize that it's all, it's all counseling. You know, every, every time, you know, somebody with, with, with wisdom and, and, and knowledge yeah. is, is sharing with you that, that that's counseling. Yeah. You know, um, John Piper wrote a, um, a book a few, like a couple decades ago that was quite popular when it came out in the 90s called Brothers, We Are Not Professionals. Yeah. And, and, and that, that just, I mean, and the sense of that is, you know, we're called to be professional in the sense that we take things, you know, take, we take our job seriously and we, mm. we offer good, you know, advice or, or we, you know, the work that we do is professional, but we're not in Christ, you know, we're, we're, we're we are there is there is no professionalism that that uh, you know view you know this view of self that's higher than others, that's that's crazy or not you know we don't take ourselves too seriously. Mm. Um, shepherds smell like sheep. Yeah. Counselors, you know, I'm just helping somebody along who is uh, along for the ride, and it's only by God's grace that I can help someone mm. as far as you know because of something that God's done in my life. I yeah. can help them in, in the same way. And and I guess. You, you never know when you're going to be put in that position um, to be to be a counselor and, and when you're going to be the only one there. And again, by by God's grace, you are the one there, <laughs> um, you know, and it's it's whether or not you're you, you kind of see yourself in that position or you, you're just going to pass it off to the, the pastor or take that opportunity to be able to to actually share into that into that moment. Um, yeah. It, it, on that on that note, I, I think one of the things people also hear is is in biblical counseling is the counseling part. Yeah, that 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 might be intimidating, but but do you uh, when you look at the biblical part, um, you know what if what if you say, well, I'm I'm not a biblical scholar, I'm not a I'm not a pastor, I'm not theologically trained, um, and I can't you know come up with with scripture verses right off the top of my head. Um, where does that fit in? Because I I you know I think. One of the th conversations I've had with people is they think that biblical counseling means applying Bible verses to every situation that 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 is happening in in someone's life. Yeah, well, I mean, <clears throat> the truth is, you can't take somebody somewhere you haven't gone already. Yeah, you know, you have to, you, you know, the, as as you are growing in the Lord and you are growing in your understanding of things, um, that knowledge that impacts you is what you use to help other people. So, mm. you know, I, there, and there's always going to be, there's a, there, there should always be someone who can always help refer to someone, you know, like your pastor, like an elder. Um, you know, I, I kind of see myself as kind of like, um, like, like a plumber, you know, like a, a specialist. So I could do a lot of work around my house, mm. you know, a, as I need, like, you know, basic maintenance stuff, but when when the pipes break, when something happens that's outside of my skill set, I call someone who who knows more than me, and, and that's just a resource that our society has. In the same way as a resource that the church is given, so you're never alone. You have a community, and you know if you're ever in over your head, you can always you know call up you know pastor. How can I help you? And and you know your pastor probably has people in his life you know 
performer professors, other pastors in other churches who he can help, who he can refer to, to help him help you. And so your job in the church, your job in your life, I mean, wherever you're at, whether you're a new Christian or you've been a Christian for a long time, maybe you're not a scholar. That's, that's fine. You still have, God has given you a, a, an air of responsibility with those around you, whether mm -hmm. you're a, a father, a mother, a brother, a sister, um, a, a neighbor, a coworker, you know, a, a fellow church member. There's some level of, of ability that God's given you to help someone else. Yeah. So the, is there a, a benefit to that more non-professional or professionalized um, style? Um, do you think there's a, a benefit to, to that over, over traditional counseling in, in some ways? Well, I, I, think, I, I, I think that there are times, one of the things that, you know, we're going to talk about this, this the biblical soul care course mm. that I run. Um, there are times where um, in our lives, in Christians' lives, uh, we might have something happen to us or something that we're struggling with, a sin issue or, or something that's done to us, or maybe even just dealing with like, you know, a health issue, something that wasn't a sin, but just living the effects of living in a broken world. And, and that stops us in our tracks that, that impacts us. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit more serious, a little bit more intense than what a lot of the people around us can really help us with. And that's why God gives us people in our lives, elders, pastors, maybe the plumber, you know, the specialist, uh, a counselor, someone who's more equipped to deal with some of the really hard issues in life mm. to kind of come alongside and help you out of the crisis. Um, and then kind of go back into the normal flow of Christian maturing, you know, the yeah. uh, mentoring discipleship. Um, I, I kind of when I, when I go through the course, I, I distinguish it. There are different levels of, of these relationships. Mm. I kind of see myself as a crisis counselor. Like when no one calls me when things are good, they call me when things have just aren't, aren't just going bad, but have yeah. completely fallen apart mm. and things are as bad as it can be. You know, the, my wife's already left me, you know, the, this has already happened. I've, I've already lost my job because of whatever, they're as bad as it can be. And so I, that's kind of when someone like myself steps in. But there are hundreds of things that happen every day amongst our normal day, daily life that require a little bit of encouragement, support with the people that God's giving you around you. Yeah. And that's where you as a spiritual friend can kind of step in and, mm. and be a help. So there's a great benefit. There's a tapestry here. There's a great benefit in, in just being a friend, uh, you know, within the, the body and being equipped to be able to help as well as if you go as far as, you know, like a specialist, like a, you know, the, the plumber analogy um, of someone who is there to help when things go really bad and mm. can be that support. Yeah. That's interesting. I, I guess something kind of came to mind as you were saying that, but you know, if, if I had a plumbing issue at home, I would go to YouTube. I'd find some training on, on how to fix it myself first. Um, even though I'm, in a rental and I'm probably not supposed to do that. Um, but I would because it, it's, it's quicker. And, uh, you know, you, you think the same about your car or, or whatever you're doing. If, if that's not your, maybe your, your field of, of career or whatever. Um, but you still study to learn how to do that. And, and you just mentioned about being a spiritual friend. Um, you know, do we, do we prepare ourselves? Do we study for that role as well for the roles that we read about in, in first Corinthians 12, you know, that, that we've been gifted to do, you know, do we actually take the time to, to study, to grow ourselves, to be prepared for what God has called us to do, prepare, be prepared for those moments when we got to share into somebody's life. Um, you know, and, and I think that's, that's important that, which leads me into talking about your soul care course. Can you, can you tell me a little bit about, tell us a little bit about what, um, what biblical soul care is and what the course is? Yeah. So I work with a group called Biblical Counseling Australia, and I, I, I basically partner with churches all around Australia to, to go in and work with the leadership um, to develop this, this course, basically to teach a four-part, um, four modules, um, four-part series in soul care. And so there's, there's, four, there's four parts. First, the first session, I come in and, and I'll teach one or two days um, and the topic is what is soul care? 
What is discipleship? What does it look like in my church? What is my personal responsibilities? And how do I help, you know, like, and how does the word impact? Like what, what's, where's the word, in, how does the word impact our souls? So how do you, basically, how do you grow? Um, what is, what is soul care? The second module is more specifically on how do you grow? Specifically, how do you, sanct- how, what is progressive sanctification? What, mm. what does it mean? How do, uh, from, how do I go from darkness to light? How do I grow? How do I overcome my own struggles? So it's really focuses on yourself. And that's, again, you can't really help somebody until you've, you've been helped. And you really don't know, if, unless you know how to grow yourself, how are you going to be able to help somebody else? So that's module two. Module three is when people get really excited because that's when you actually start dealing with how do you then, with all that that you've learned, start helping other people. So we work through that. And then module four is how do you then incorporate all this information, all this knowledge into your own personal ministry in the church? And so these four parts, you know, there's homework assignments in between where you basically have a spiritual conversation. What does that look like? How do I know that I'm focusing people? And look, I boil it all down to this. If you have the mindset, how can I help this person love Christ more? You're, mm-hmm. you're, you're working in biblical counseling. You're working as a biblical counselor. You're yeah. working as a soul care um, provider. Mm. A- and so what does that actually look like? That's what the whole course is about. Yeah. 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 Well, we, um, we intend on offering that course here in Chinchilla. And, and if you're watching this, I'd recommend if you're wherever you are, if you, if you have an opportunity to, to do that. Um, I haven't haven't taken the course, and I'm excited to uh, to do that here in in Chinchilla. Um, but I, I just think the the whole notion of of preparing ourselves to to again, I, I like that word that you used before, a spiritual friend. Um, you know, just just being able to take the time to prepare ourselves for that because it is a big job, like it is a big task, and all those all those opportunities we see in in scripture that we're called to do and and even the great commission and using our gifts uh to you know the the command is we use those to build each other up into the body of christ and and um that 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 does require preparation it does require um some some study and and knowing where god is leading you and and prayer and and so i think this is a great opportunity to to um to learn a bit more about about how to do that and um, yeah, what are what are some other resources? I guess you you could um, for anybody interested in um, biblical counseling or biblical soul care, or or even those who would like to to go down the path of getting some um, certification or or things with that. Um, what are what are some? Yeah, well, um, I'm like I mentioned. Uh, you know, there's the the group that I'm associated with, Biblical Counseling Australia. Mm-hmm. So that's. That's a wonderful ministry. That's a network that we have uh, within Australia. Um, I'm also, uh, I'm a lecturer at the Australian College of Christian Studies. Mm -hmm. So I teach, um, I'm the the head of the biblical, uh, the counseling department there. So if you, there's also um, a website, uh, there are two websites, two blogs um, I'd recommend. One of them is connected with ACBC, the Association of Certified Biblical Counselors. So that's, um, Biblical Counseling, the American Spelling, um, mm-hmm. with just one L, uh, biblicalcounseling.com. And then the other the other one is uh, CCEF. So CCEF.org, that's another great ministry. That's a, They have a great blog there. And there are just tons of resources. within Between those two blogs, you'll get tons of resources to um, think through uh, biblically uh, a number of topics. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I invite you to check those out. We'll put those down at the bottom of the screen in the editing. And um, also, I just, I had no idea about the the two L's in the American spelling. I've been yep. typing this in in advertisements and and um, Word documents and getting really frustrated at every time. I'm like, I, I got a counseling degree. I know how to spell counseling. <laughs> and um, always wondered why it always came up with the red on those. <laughs> um, now I now I know. <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you, thank you for joining us, Adrian. And and um, yeah, check out um, the the, uh, the sites that we post on the bottom. And and if you're in Chinchilla, we really want to encourage you to um, to check out the course. And and uh, when we have it, we'll announce that when we have a few more 
people interested, but we've got, got quite a few. And, um, and if you're in someplace else and you hear of uh, that course being offered, please um, would encourage you to, to take that. And, um, and thanks again, Adrian. And um, my pleasure. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hope